um so hi everyone welcome to our um third cultural session we're going to be talking about like different kanto prefectures um kanto is the region around tokyo in japan so you've got tokyo as a capital city quite big and then outside of tokyo you have um five what they call prefectures in japan um where you can go um and everyone talks about you know tokyo and like osaka and there's there's the well-known places in japan but we're just going to show you some other places that you might not have heard of before but it's they're really cool tourist hotspots to go and check out and um yeah so first of all ben's gonna just show us about um kanagawa which is one of the prefectures mm -hmm. and also show some interesting um dialects phrases as well for those of you learning japanese cool yeah so as tarik said the first place i'm going to talk about in the kanto region is kanagawa um there are two main places that tourists generally visit um these are kamakura which we've covered on a previous lesson and hakone um which i will go over in in this lesson there's also uh the capital of uh kanagawa which is yokohama which can also be sort of a tourist hotspot uh hakone is a geopark that is located to the towards the southwest region of kanagawa because of its location near to mount fuji there are lots of hot springs or onsen which are usually housed with, within a ryokan, a Japanese-style inn. The onsen are so popular you can relax in... Uh, because the onsens are so popular because you can relax in the hot, mineral-rich natural spring water while having a view of the beautiful Mount Fuji. Um, there are a few dishes that can be described as the local delis delicacy of Kanagawa, such as naparitan, which is sort of like a pasta thing, um, misaki meguro, which is tuna ramen, or even their own Yokohama beef, which is of Wagyu standard. Um, however, uh, for something a little different, I've decided to feature namashirasu don. Uh, this time, shirasu don is basically a, a rice bowl topped with white fish bait, uh, green onions, uh, sometimes uh, ginger and shoyu. Uh, it can be slightly sweet and may have a uh, salty smell to it. Uh, like most places in Japan, Kanagawa has its fair share of yuru karik. Sorry, I'll start that again. Like most places in Kanagawa, uh, I'll start that again. <laughs> like most places in Japan, <laughs> Kanagawa has its fair share of yukara. One of Kanagawa's yukaras is Ayukoro-chan. Uh, Ayukoro-chan is Atsugi City's mascot. She's described as a tiny pig uh, who wears a blue yukata, and she also has a, a fish on her head. So for some of the words and phrases that um, are possibly unique to Kanagawa, um, we have the first one here, which is Jan, which usually goes at the end of um, a sentence uh, saying, uh, me or meaning in English, uh, isn't it or right? So the example I put is, Sore ijan, which means that's good, isn't it? Uh, the next one is dabe. And again, that means isn't it, but uh, in a different context. Um, I couldn't find a specific example for this, but I think you would use it at the same as like a, a dish or, or daro, something like that. Um, so the next one, uh, we have another ending, uh, which is sho, again, meaning right, but again, in another context. 
Uh, so the example for this one is Shogunai's, uh, Shogunai Sho, which um, means ah, yeah. uh, which doesn't mean ah, right? It means um, never mind. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. never mind. Yeah. Um, as well, I, th I think I'm not sure if um, she's awake. We, we invited. Eri, who's from Japan, but she, because her time zone is like nine hours ahead, I don't know if she's... Hello. 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 Hi. Hey. Hey. So, um, uh, so we, we just um, invited Eri, if she could pronounce like some of some of the words as well um, in Jap Japanese, some of the phrases. Um, if she's able to make it through because it's like four o'clock or three o'clock over in japan so if she's <coughs> if you're if you're if you're if you're okay to pronounce um sh like some of the example sentences um ben if you just talk through them then yeah we can show the example yeah yeah how you pronounce them yeah so the first example word is uh, uzatai, which means disgusting or annoying. And the example would be, um, my hair is annoying. So yeah, if if you could read the uh, the Japanese out area, that would be. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, the next one is katarui. Which means katarui. Um, I meaning it's hard as in effort kind of thing. So it's it's, it's hard to move. Yeah. yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult to move. It's hard to move. And then the final example would be chokotto, uh, which is sort of short for chotto and skoshi. Uh, and it means a little bit. Then if you can read the mm -hmm. example sentence. I'm sorry. It's okay. Chokotto. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Chokotto. <laughs> chokotto. Todai. ちょっと。ください。え、そうです。え、エクサンプル。うん。はい。ありがとう、エリ様。ありがとう。ね、ね。ありがとう。エリ様。エリ様。エリ様。エリ様。エリ様。エリ様。エリ様。エリ様。エ
it's it's really underrated. It's quite underrated, yeah. Yeah. I think two thirds of the region is like greenery and mountainous regions. However, yeah, the, yeah. They're pretty much only famous from the for for the onsen that they have on that side. Yeah, but there is more than just the onsen. There's a lot of I mean the places. Yeah. The whole Kanto region is famous for its onsen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, oh, it's a whole because Kanto region as well, so there are different places in Kanto. Mm hmm. Because like Chiba is also famous for its onsen, Gunma is famous for its onsen, and the uh, uh, the previous one I forgot its name. It's also famous. Yeah, Kanagawa. It's also famous for its onsen. Clip is showing you like some of the stuff you can go and see, some of the stuff you can buy. It's not showing a lot of the scenery. That that place, Moika Silk Mill, Silk Mill, sorry, is a, a World Heritage Site as well. Um, and as you can see, that's an onsen town. It's more of something you can go and see. Yeah, hey, uh, the so-called onsen with the golden water. Yashi, I check your trust. You actually researched about it. Hmm? You actually researched about it. <laughs> so, like, Ricardo and I, me are just going to show you, like, some other spots in Gummo in detail. Um, so, okay, let's see if we can. Uh huh. No, the pictures came out terrible. <laughs> oh. The quality. They're visible, don't They're worry. Visible. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so, as you can probably see, if you can see through the, the pixels on the screen, um, if you can see the pictures, there's diff you can see the kind of variety of landscapes that you can find in Gunma. In the top right is um, a lavender park um, full of lavender plants, um, which is quite beautiful, actually. Um, and then... At the very bottom, you have um, a temple, a shrine that's built around um, like magma that's kind of hardened and made this whole rocky plain that surrounds it. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of different um, varieties of landscapes that you can find in Gunma, which is just beautiful and it's worth visiting. So if Ricardo, you can show us about it. Ikaho Onsen on the Dashimaras. Wait, ah, the Ikaho Onsen. Ikaho Onsen. Hi, hi. Yeah, Ikaho Onsen is basically uh, an ancient small onsen city in Gunma. That's like about 1,400 years old. And it's pretty famous for the onsen that they have. Uh, as they have like uh, golden water onsen, which Jap Japanese people believe that is good for your internal organs. As he says, uh, as they say, the, wa the water warms your, your internal or organs from inside, which sounds pretty neat, to be fair. Mm. So this part is but, just. Uh, yeah. 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 Go on. I was just saying. No, I was just going. Go on. Yeah. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> this is over. Um, I was just going to say this. Yeah. This is basically um, the, the, the bottom of the stairs to Ikaho Onsen. Um, there's 365 stairs to climb. And it, the stairs go right through the center of the town. There were, it was built in about 16, 1600s for soldiers who were injured to um, have easy access to the onsen as it um, helped to relieve their pain. Oh, not sure. Hi, hi. Um, so this is just uh, like some more pictures of some of the onsen. Um, do you want to continue, Ricardo? Oh, 
about the onsen. Yeah, hi. Uh, not sure if I had more stuff to add. To be fair, because apart from the golden water, mm. uh, golden water, uh, yeah, this on new because just yeah, because as I say, as I said before, they believe it's good for your internal organs, mm-hmm. so they recommend that. Yeah, a lot. Definitely, definitely. Um... Uh, uh, like you said as well. He helped. He helped a lot the uh, the soldiers when they were injured. Mm. And um, so th- there's there's with the outdoor onsens there's two types of water. One's the the brownish golden water that Ricardo was just talking about, and they um, recently they found um, uh, they call silver water. They found a, like a deposit. Where they could, they extract that water into these onsen, which is also has which also has health benefits as well. Um, cool thing about this place, it has um, lots of ryokans and restaurants either side of the stairs. Um, there's ro- inside of each rokan, you can get access to your own mini inside like indoor onsen like this one, and um, even if you pay a bit more money, you can get your own private onsen with your room. Um, obviously very pricey but it's it's obviously your own space which is really cool um, and it's nice as you get like the scenic quiet environment of Ikaho town as well um, and these are just some other onsens around um, Gunma there's four main onsens um, but this is another popular one outdoor onsens as well um, and this is a really famous one as well and here's some more scenery so you get the idea of like the variety of scenery in Gumma as well um and ricardo do you want to talk about yayoi Hime? yeah the the ditch the strawberry yeah hi oh yeah the strawberry yeah mm-hmm. yeah uh, so the strawberry is the type of strawberry only grows in Gumma. And it's fa- it's famous to be a balance on its flavor. This is a sweet but not too sweet. And uh, the other one other fact about this strawberry, uh, you can't find in supermarkets. You can only buy it on local local farms because they don't they don't export they don't export this strawberry. They just keep it in the mm. That's kind of like the the local secret, I would say. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So if you want to try it, definitely have to go to Guma. And you got Okiri Komi. Yeah, we were talking about Okiri Komi. I want me to do it. Hi. Uh, no, you can you you, you can carry on. Yeah. So that's about Okiri Komi. Oh. Hi hi. So the okirikomi is is, a, is one of uh, Goma traditional dishes, uh, which was like a homemade uh, dish. But you, these days you can find it pretty much in every in any restaurant in Goma. Uh, it's usually uh, it, it's usually uh, vegetables uh, uh, and noodles mixed together, and just like this kind of like ramen look. Yeah, but it's not ramen. <laughs> cool, cool. And yaki manju. Oh, uh, yeah, when we talk about yaki manju as well. Hi, hi. 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 So, yaki manju is a snack. But, yeah, <laughs> popular in Yuma as well. Uh, which means roasted sweet bun. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if you know that, you know, the small things you do on the, on summer. No, 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 no. Dango. You know dangos, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty, it's a bit like dangos, but they use four buns with, uh, with bean jam on the skewer. And then they put miso, miso sauce on it. But it but it was over shashu, but yeah, 
I say it's pretty, it's more like the you know those small those things you do on barbecue like people like chicken skewers and stuff like that. But yeah, but made with uh, with buns instead. There's, there's like, mm, yeah. There's a um, there's a festival for the snack as well. Um, I, I don't know if you can see the middle picture is like a massive yakimanju, I guess. <laughs> um, I I don't I don't think you can like carry that around when you're walking. <laughs> probably, <like. laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably a bit too big. Um, but hey, I wanted to show a quick clip to show a Japanese person approving of yakimanju in two two forty p. Can you see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here we go. It's a lot bigger than I expected, though. How many buns? There you go. You should, you should go and get it. <laughs> 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 She approved. I mean, it's good. Right. Oh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and do you want to talk about Gummer's mascot as well? Ah, the little pony. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, so Gunma, uh, means flock of horses so that's why they have a pony as a mascot pretty much i <laughs> think there's no much sorry about it just like yeah just the 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 the, the, the gunma literally means flock of horses they decided to have a pony as a mascot as is the best way to represent this, the region <clears throat> Um, we got this green, green, green hat with green shirt, and a little <laughs> red, right. red rainbow or on his neck. Mm. Quite cute though. It's quite... Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> if you probably notice now, like each prefecture all over Japan has like its own little cute mascot. Um, I've got a video just showing you like this this mascot's just gonna do a little jump tour around Gunma, I suppose. So let's I wish you had mascots in the UK too. That would never happen. I don't I don't think so. Maybe in the UK they can't appreciate this kind of cuteness. <laughs> Yo, where is this where is the green shirt? Uh, it's sometimes naked. Yeah, sometimes it's naked. <laughs> I just checking, everyone can see the video, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mascot. All the yeah. mascots have like cute names that they've just come up with, and Gunma is just Gunma Chan. I mean, Chiba is Chiba Kun, so. Oh, is it? Okay. No, yeah. <laughs> I guess, I guess they, they were lazy with some, but yeah. <clears throat> I included um, some different 
um, phrases from Gumma. Um, you probably noticed that, um, so there's an, um, when I show another Kanto region, there's um, in Kanto, instead of saying nai, the, I guess they're supposed to use, like, they kind of use ne quite a lot instead of nai sounds. So, Tatoeba, uh, Nanimo Nain Sambe, or Nanimo Nain Sabe, um, which is like, I don't know, instead of Nani Mo Nai or Nani Mo Shiranai. Um, <coughs> shiranai is Shiranan, Shiranende. Um, Eto e, Eri Eri San Eri San Hi hi. Hi hi. I can't believe you're still awake. <laughs> 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 I didn't, um, do you, could you pronounce the, have you heard of the Shiran, Shiranan, Shit, I can't, I've lost it, Shiranan Nembe. Shiran, Shiran Nembe. Shiran Nembe. Shiran Nembe. Shiran Nembe. Mm -hmm. Hi, hi. Um, <coughs> so instead of, you got Shiranai or Shiran Nembe. So you can compare between how you'd say it in like general Japanese and you can see the dialect is a bit different. I included some other phrases. Uh, uh, the there's a few other ones I found as well. Okay. <clears throat> I like oto, otomori. It's like the way Kuma has to say babysitter. Otomori. Like, yeah, because usually in Japan they say babysitter, like um, like the same way we say, but we, we, we they write it with katakana. But uh, um, guma as a word for it is otomori. Uh, so... uh, another another word uh, dialect is which they use this as well in Osaka is oto ototosa, which is for fish. That's Mm -hmm. Instead of calling fish sakana and goma the color of toto sap. And another interesting one as well is uh dialect for lies. Uh they say sorape. Sorape. Like lies. And it's like so? Hmm? Yeah. So exactly. Okay. But in in Guma they say sorape. I did find another odd ones, but they're not that interesting. But you got the one for eyebrows as well, which in Guma, and not only Guma, because they were in Fukushima as well, uh, is Mami, Mamiche, Mami, Mamiche, yeah, Mamige, yeah. I think so, I was I was I was just talking to my friend from Gunma as well, and she was saying that like they it tends to be in this region older generation that might say a lot more of the slang. The younger generation are more yeah. in with the general Jap Japanese, Japanese. Slang, where, yeah. whereas the elders are more regional in their dialect. Not to say that it won't slip out their dialect in when you when you um, well, uh, with younger people, but I think you know which town you're talking about. It might be Tochigi, no? Hmm? Tochigi. Tochigi. I mean, Tochigi is um, yeah. Tochigi might be more elder people as well. But um. As she was saying as well that the young people and everyone tends to use to used to say usually says like none none a lot like so so or so or so like if you're agreeing you usually say or you'd add none as like a filler thing when you're speaking um but yeah okay um yeah thanks ricardo for um this showing us good mark um Thank you. <laughs> Thank you both. <laughs> <laughs> so the next no. one 
is Torchigi. Uh, and it's just a short video just showing you, like, I mean, an example of some of Torchigi. I won't play it all. Just you an idea. Oh yeah, G. So you can probably see that Oya Stone is um, using a lot of, is it, is a lot of uh, common material used for some of these buildings and it's a quite a um, well used resource to achieve um, the buildings. Just gives you a bit of a, an example of what it's like. Um, uh, wait, okay. before can, if I go to mention something for Guma. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, there's an anime uh, called Omaiwa uh, Mother Guma Shirenai, which is uh, anime based in Guma. Uh, it's it's a comedy and it's quite ridiculous, but they kind of Show, uh, so, show, uh, showcase some features about Guma and they talk, they talk about the dishes as well and stuff and it's, yeah mm. it's quite interesting but I don't take it too seriously because it's, it's a ridiculous comedy but yeah they're speaking Guma dialect as well yeah they do because mm. uh, the anime is about a guy, a guy who, trans, who went to a student who transferred to a school in Guma, but he did nothing. He didn't know nothing about Guma before he went there. Just just said the bad rumors that everyone in Japan heard before about Guma. Oh. And then by the time he got there, since they they out speaking in Guma dialect, he couldn't understand anything. <laughs> anyway. What well, the, the main character couldn't? No, because because for for him it was weird because. Yeah, Guma dialect is completely different from because I think the main character was from Tokyo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's quite interesting though. Mm. Should. <laughs> yes, yeah, so but I'm saying it's ridiculous. Yeah, funny. yeah, for sure, for sure. But yeah, I think as well, like, if 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 anyone like learning Japanese in general, like if you if you learn in any language that is, and you learn that like the way to speak it normally you'll probably find that if you're trying to work out um, a dialect from a particular region it might be difficult and that that's kind of like a humbling experience because you realize that actually there's a lot more to the language than you might have thought so even even i guess even for japanese people it can be difficult yeah. to understand um, mm -hmm. yeah so even japanese people struggle to understand odd mm. dialects yeah but, um, so, yeah, thank you for that, Ricardo. 
聞いた音でも。先生。どうしましょう。先生じゃない。先生じゃない。<笑><笑><笑><笑> okay, okay. <笑>そう、次は、let's see, is it gonna? あ,あ、そうだよ。あ、OK。Um, let's go back. So there's、um, a few scenic places in Toshigi, such as Wakayama Bamboo Forest.、Um, you've got Ashigawa Flower Park, which is、um, a really beautiful spot if you want to look at like, the flowers blooming and stuff.、Um, which a particular flower that blooms there is、um, called Wist- Wistara. Um, and there's a lot of pretty scenes and flowers.、Um, the large tree, you probably see at the bottom, this large tree、um, drooping with Wistera plants. It's about 100 years old. And I guess it kind of looks like the one in、um, James Cameron's Avatar. If, I'm not sure if it's inspired by that, but you can kind of see that kind of. The resemblance, the resemblance definitely. Yeah, yeah.、Oh. The best. Time to view is like in May because that's when all the flowers are in like full blossom. But、um, because it's one of the best spots in the whole of Japan to view Fuji flowers,、um, the flowers that you see, it、um, can be very crowded on weekdays during the peak season.、Um, but it is、um, supposed to be quite a really pretty place to go and explore.、Um, I just put at the bottom there the kanji for、um, Wistara, which is Fuji.、Um, same way you pronounce Mount Fuji, but it's not the same kanji.、Mm-hmm. Also, if you want to go into a blast into the past, there's en- Edo Wonderland. So there's a whole like, theme park taken back to the Edo period. You can pretty much dress up like an Edo character. You, you could even dress up as a ninja, get basic ninja training there as well. Cool. So, like, you get to interact with the, the people there. It's like an interactive town.、Um, okay. So, if, if yeah, I'm trying to think of an example, if you've ever watched Westworld or something and you kind of go around.、Um, is it Westworld?、Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, you go around and you can. It, it's like you're in a new. It's like you're blasted into the past. You can interact with the people as if they're from the Edo period. Um, and it's definitely a nice spot to go to if you're interested in the culture. Okay, so with Tochigi, the capital city is Utsunomiya City. And as you can see on the map, it's just、um, north of Tokyo.、Um, the、um, famous food of Utsunomiya City is、um, Gyoza.、Uh, Utsunomiya City is famous. For its wa- wide variety of gyozas. Gyoza is、um, it's originally from China, but、um, after World War II, after the Japanese were stationed in China, they, were re- they really liked gyoza and they brought it back and developed their own recipe and made their own version of the food.、Um, the festival, you can pretty much go there and get gyoza, three gyozas for about like、um, 100 yen. Um, so, you can just go around and just get gyozas and just try different flavors. It's about at the festival that hosts a gyoza,、um, is Tsunomiya City Gyoza Festival.、Um, there's like about 20 different stores that、um, are selling gyozas, so you can go around and take a, take a taste of them.、Um, and obviously, it's cheap gyoza. It's not like if you <laughs> go into Wagamama's or something, it's like five pounds and you get like five pieces of gyoza. This is like very cheap. Oh, that's five pounds. Yeah, yeah, I went to Wagamama to get gyozas once. It was about five pounds and I got like very small gyozas. It's like. And I bet it tastes good. It doesn't taste that great. Yeah, it's <laughs> kind of a bit like.、Uh, but, um. Yeah, that's all right. right you got、um, the mascot for、um, Tochigi is Tochisuke,、um, who is like a warehouse fairy.、Um, the cool thing is, I got some little cute line stickers、um, because you can get line stickers of like different mascots from different regions. 
but um yeah tochigi dialect um what i found from a website is um that um someone was researching and found a website in japanese that broke down the tochigi dialect um it's considered one of like the stranger um dialects in the eastern kanto region um and um apparently according to this website um it's it, it has um a statue made from art it, it says article 34 section 3 of constitution of tochigi prefecture states that uh, all male teachers over the age of 50 must communicate exclusively in local dialect so as to render themselves completely incomprehensible to foreigners the general japanese population and probably each other as well so what well, i don't know how <laughs> true that is but it's um it's it's not a dialect that you probably find easy to hear but um we've got a couple of phrases so if you've got the top one is like shiranai that's how you'd say i don't know um and the i sound becomes e so shirane same same with osoina which is late you might say osene yesena or kaeta is it kaeta keta so there's slight changes in the pronunciations um again you've got some couple phrases um down here um eri sensei iru no ka hi i feel i feel bad to keep saying that you <laughs> <laughs> So many this. So, um, if you could um, read the first phrase um, for this one where the mouse is. Which is the same as which is like okay let's try it give it a try and then there's this one Dambe. Dambe. Um, which is like so de show. Did you say you said Eri as well? They they say Dambe. They say Dambe somewhere um, else. I don't think so. Oh, right, okay. I don't use. You don't use Dambe. I mean, it's in Kanagawa. Yeah. Kanagawa, no. Oh yeah, because it's a Tuchigi. True, true, true. There's that this one as well. Daijida. Daijida. Which is supposed to be Daijobu, but obviously it's been shortened. And I guess the last one's a bit, <laughs> a, bit <laughs> a bit um profane, but okay. Um so sho sho shoben gashitai or I guess shonben mutte I don't know how it, it, again it's it's quite different to the original versions of Shog Shoben Gashitai. But um yeah if you if you I guess if you really need to go to number one, sure you can say that. I guess uh, the locals will be impressed, I suppose. Tariq. Hi. Well add one thing. Oh no, the Yatem Yo. Mm -hmm. You say uh it means let's try it. Yeah. It's but uh, well, before the tamish tamish te, tamish tem yo, let's try as well. Oh yeah, you can say tamish tem yo as well. Yeah, there's there's different phrases to say tamish tem yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Yattemio and Tamishtemio. Uh, it's the same meaning, but Yattemio is more casual. Casual. Mm -hmm. Oh, Naruto. Naruto. Arigato. 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 Arigato.
that in. So finally, um, Sinan is just going to talk to us about Chiba Prefecture. Yep. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, hello. The name of Chiba Prefecture in Japanese is formed from the two kanji characters. The first one meaning thousand and the second one meaning leaves. So basically Chiba translates to a thousand leaves. Uh, you can see here Chiba-kun, who is the mascot of Chiba. Uh, his design is based on the uh, geographical territory of the, the Chiba prefecture. Uh, it is located in the Kanto region of Honshu, and it borders with Ibaraki uh, to the north, Saitama to the northwest, and Tokyo to the south. Uh, it's famous for mostly for its peanuts. Uh, it exports a, a large amount of them also. Uh, apart from that, though, uh, because of its mild climate and fertile land, uh, surrounded by a generous sea as well, it is also the source of various vegetables such as the daikon, uh, radish, uh, and carrots as well. And fruits like veg uh, like the Japanese plum and pear, as well as marine products like lobsters, abalones, and seaweeds, sardines, etc. Uh, this makes it one of Japan's uh, leading prefectures in the production of agricult agriculture, forestry, and uh, fishery products. Uh, its local gourmet dishes include the ramen and curry, using ingredients from the prefecture, locally, and the kaisendon, which is pictured here. It's basically a seafood rice ball, uh, which uses the fresh marine products after they were caught. Um, in addition to that, thanks to the prosperous rice production, there are about 40 sake breweries in the prefecture that are uh, constantly competing in terms of taste, techniques, and quality. Uh, you can see different bottles of different brands there. And uh, it's also known as the soy sauce brand region of Kanto. And its production volume is top class in Japan. You can see a, a bottle on the right. Uh, I'll be telling you about some places to visit while well, if you're going to uh, Chiba. First of which is that there are more than 200 hot springs in Chiba, uh, with, all with beautiful views of the Sien Mountain. Uh, there's a concentration of hot springs and lodging facilities in unique and various locations all around Chiba, such as uh, springs hidden in mountains and baths along the mountain stream, all surrounded by forest and uh, like open air baths with the uh, of course, with view of uh, Fujiyama or Mount Fuji. And then another place you can visit is uh, Japan's very own Disneyland, which is located in uh, Chiba. And yeah, everyone knows what Disneyland is. <laughs> yeah. uh, in Chiba Prefecture, there are also a lot of large-scale shopping malls, such as Japan's largest commercial facility, Lalaport Tokyo Bay, uh, the orange one, and uh, Mitsui Outlet Park, Kisarazu, which is uh, the one on the top right. Uh, there's also plenty of entertainment malls, offering not only shopping, but also uh, games and amusement, like the Ion Mall in Kisarazu as well. Uh, and the uh, Ion Mall Makuhari Shintoshin, which includes a 4DX cinema, futsal fields, tennis courts, bouldering studios, and many other entertainments and amusements. I love cheese already. Mm. Uh, and I'll be mentioning some uh, dialect words because they do not have uh, whole sentences or specific uh, diff uh, specific uh, 
prefixes or suffixes that they add to words. They just change up some words a bit. Uh, first, we have yakoi, which uh, can be, you can see it written in two ways, one with the hiragana and the other one with the dash, which means that they elongate the vowel of the previous, uh, uh, of the previous hiragana, basically. Uh, and it means soft, as in soft to the touch. Uh, next, we have nijiru, which is to pinch. Uh, yukure, again, you can see variations of its writing, which means evening or dusk. Uh, we have ucharu, which means to throw. And hyakkoi, which is cold, again, cold to the touch, not like the weather cold. うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。う